Um, and I was successfully recaptured in only 30 minutes. So. <laughs> Uh, we have active collaboration with local law enforcement. We've already invited them out to our property. They've had tours. Um, they've trained us in some safety protocols, including fire extinguisher training, things like that. And we work with Sheriff Dane Kirby um, to really optimize our emergency <coughs> response procedures. So they have a plan in place. Uh, if we had a human emergency or a chimp emergency of any kind, um, we're prepared with local law enforcement to deal with those. Um, we've had a lot of renovations on property. We've already spent over $3 million in renovations to the property. Uh, which is pretty incredible when you think about it because a lot of it was already there, yet we're still doing all of these renovations to make it just absolutely 100% safe and optimal for chimpanzees. And uh, so renovation areas have included really all areas of the property, but specifically the villas, just like I said, to make sure that they are just as safe as they possibly can be. Uh, one fun renovation project we did was with Rachel Ray, a famous chef, if you know who that is. Uh, she heard about what we were doing, and she's a big um, animal person. She donates a lot of money to, like, dog rescues and things of that nature. And so she definitely wanted to help the chimpanzees, and she took what was the original Gorilla Haven kitchen. Totally fine kitchen, um, but maybe a little bland <laughs> in some ways. And va va boom spruced it up Rachel Ray style and now it's natural than all of our kitchens in our house <laughs> so this is a really great workspace for us to prepare meals for the chimpanzees and eventually once we get um, the electric fencing up the chimps won't be able to come right up to the window but they will be able to see through the electric fencing and see in the kitchen window there and maybe enjoy watching us prepare their meals for them so we're providing a lot, a lot of local jobs. We have over 65 contractors working for us. Um, so we're gonna be one of the largest employers of jobs in Fannin County. We expect to grow to a staff of over 60 permanent employees by the time we have all 220 <coughs> chimpanzees on property. And a lot of those jo jobs will be locally hired. Um, real quick, I wanna go through a little chimpanzee 101 because I don't think anyone here is a chimp expert in my right on that and they don't chimp so just a few quick things that everybody should know about a chimpanzee so first of all the maybe the most important thing are chimps are great apes not monkeys everyone just generalizes the term monkey but guess what chimps are actually great apes uh, i don't know if you know this but we are actually great apes too we are in the great ape category and chimps are great apes along with gorillas uh, bonobos which look a lot like a chimpanzee orangutans and us those are the great apes uh, do you know the main way to tell a great ape from a monkey? If you were just looking at, most people can easily tell what a primate looks like. You look at, you go, oh, that's a primate. How do you tell a great ape from a monkey? Tail. Tail. That's exactly right. We don't have tails. Chimps don't have tails. Monkeys have tails. So it's pretty easy. Unless I'm, do I have one back there? No, I'm not growing one, right? Okay, chimps live in Africa in forest savannas and mosaic habitats. So this is, this is the range over here where chimpanzees live, and this is what their forest structure looks like. So actually in that six acre habitat, um, it's maybe not quite that dense, but it's, it looks pretty good for a chimpanzee habitat. So I think the chimps will really enjoy that habitat that we're going to provide them with. And I actually study chimpanzees in the wild in Uganda, way over here, and I'm still doing that. So every year I go back to Uganda and work on my research there and uh, my conservation projects. All chimpanzees are now endangered, I happily say, because that split listing ended. Actually, I don't happily say they're endangered. That sounded really weird, but I just mean captive chimps are also classified in, as endangered now. Uh, but all chimps are endangered, which is very serious. Oh, and I should point out, so this, I'm the director of conservation for my field site, and this chimpanzee here, one of the main threats is snaring to chimpanzees. They actually, local people are not trying to capture chimpanzees or catch chimpanzees, but chimpanzees still get caught in snares. And you see this male here, he's missing both of his feet. And both of his feet were actually strangulated off by wire snares on two separate occasions. So it's a very serious problem in Africa, among other things like deforestation and disease. Uh, they live in multi-male, multi-female communities of 15 to 200 members. So it really fluctuates in size. And chimpanzees live in communities just like humans live in communities. So within your community, you recognize certain individuals as being familiar. And when you see familiars, you're not threatened by them. So if you 
saw me sometime walking through your yard. You might think, why is Jess in my yard? But you hopefully wouldn't pull a shotgun out on me, right? But um, so you recognize me as now part of your familiar community. Chimps are the same way. As long as you're familiar to them, they're not going to be territorially aggressive towards you. Mm -hmm. However, if they are unknown, they defend their territory and are very aggressive towards one another. <laughs> so within that community of familiars, they always change who they're with. They're not like herd animals. They're not like cattle or deer that stay in the same group structure. They're always changing who they're with. And so right now, we're together. And they call this a party when you have certain individuals together. But later you're gonna go home and be with other family members and that's gonna be a party. And then you may go to work or go to another club and that's a party. So you're always changing who you're with. And so it creates very socially complex and dynamic groups. And this is also a reason we think that chimpanzees are so intelligent and able to recognize individuals so well. They have to really manage these social relationships because they're always changing and they have to be really savvy on this kind of thing. And so chimpanzees' structure, social structure is very similar to humans. So chimpanzees actually nurse until they're five years old and they depend on their mothers until they're eight or nine. So in the wild, when I'm following chimps in the wild, when I see a mom, I'm ready to start counting dependents following behind. Usually one's on her belly or on her back, that's the five or younger one, and then she has a string of, you know, a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old, and that, you know, not that close together actually, but she'll have several individuals following behind her. Um, and uh, they don't reach adulthood until they're 12 for females and 15 for males. So in terms of their development, that's also very similar to humans. Um, and when they reach sexual maturity or puberty, uh, females get this monthly sexual swelling. And you can see this on her rump right here. And I like to point this out, especially if eventually you guys come visit us at the sanctuary, you will see females with this swelling. And some people look at that swelling and they go, something's wrong with her bottom. Oh my gosh, something's totally wrong. And we go, oh no, that's totally normal. She's in estrus right now and it's totally fine. But these swellings, they are bright pink, some are very dainty and tiny and small and others are huge and they really have this really tight skin and, and really bubble out and it looks painful at times but to males in the wild that is the prettiest thing you could ever imagine. It's like a big pink flower in the forest saying, hello, I'm over here. Um, so I'm just glad that we don't have swellings or you know, have to have a different pair of jeans for every day of the week. Okay, so chimps can also live into their 40s or their 40s on average, but even up into their 60s. So lifespan is also very similar to humans. Um, and these are two old geezers over here grooming each other. This is Stout. He was in the, lived in the wild in the field study I, I study at, and he lived to be over 60 years old. And that's his buddy, Big Brown, who's still alive, and he's 50. So chimps can live a very long time. So what that means for us is that we are going to be caring for chimps for a very long time in Fannin County. It's not like having a dog. This is a very long commitment, and we do have a one-year-old that is uh, in the population that we will be getting. So we'll be here for 50 years. Surprise. Um, and chimps are actually omnivores. A lot of people think they're vegetarians. Gorillas are vegetarians, but chimpanzees do eat meat. About 5 to 15% of their diet is meat. And actually, the meat that they eat typically is monkeys. <laughs> So this is another good reason to distinguish them. <laughs> so this is actually a monkey in the mouth of Islam's face there. Uh, but they mostly eat fruit, and they love, love eating fruit. And chimps are very expressive, observant, and social and intelligent. And I'd just like to point that out because anytime anyone spends any amount of time with a chimpanzee, one of the most typical comments I get back is, gosh, it's like I was looking talking to, interacting with a human. Like everyone thinks they're so human-like and they really are. Their, their social structure is so similar to ours and they're so intelligent, it's like interacting with another human. And we make the mistake all the time of calling them people when we're talking, oh, we were trying to, you know, when we're talking about them, we just talk about them like they're people all the time and even use that term. Uh, so captive chimps weigh 125 to 175 pounds, and they are, but they are two to seven times stronger than an adult human. So it's important to point this out because even though they're in the weight range of humans, so this is a very typical weight range for humans, pound for pound, they are much stronger than we are. Their muscles are three times as dense, their bones are three times as dense. So you always want to have that healthy 
I want to say healthy fear when you're interacting with the chimp. I mean, you should never be sticking your hands in the cage. We never go into the cage with the chimps because even if they were just playing with us, they could really hurt us. And then it's always the chimpanzee that gets blamed for those kinds of things. And sometimes we hear really horrible things in the media about chimps, you know, hurting humans or attacking humans. And this is all a product of captivity. I in the wild stand as close as I am to you here. The chimpanzees never touch me, they never bother me, I don't interact with them, that's one big difference. That here in captivity, we will engage and interact. I'm just observing them, um, but we are like furniture to them and they don't bother us. But when you take an ape that's so socially complex and put them in captivity, something changes, something happens, and a lot of times you can't provide for all the needs they need and they really struggle in that environment. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to note if you put them in, in awkward situations or if you in some ways make them feel like they're threatened, they're cornered in some way, um, it, it's just not a good situation. So we would never compromise the chimp's integrity in that way. And we are always are very respectful of that's their space, this is our space, we can still interact and engage, um, but we are never gonna you know, be in the same space as one another. Okay, so quick facial expressions on Chimp 101. Um, so facial, ex they're very expressive, just like humans, and you can already start to see they look very different. You can tell chimpanzees apart. Each chimpanzee has their own name. You can tell them apart, just like I can tell you guys apart. Once you get to know them, you spend an hour with them, you all of a sudden are memorizing their names and see how uniquely different they are and how they look and also their personalities. So relaxed face is very similar to ours. When they're really relaxed, they get a really saggy, droopy lip. Um, when they're playing, this is a big distinction, so when we're playing and when we're happy, we smile like this and we show all of our teeth. But if we think about all other animals, we think how weird is this smile? What other animal do you know shows their teeth when they're happy? What does teeth mean to you if you see a dog doing this? It means get back, you're either going to get bit because dog is afraid or being aggressive or something like that. Every other animal is like that. We are the weird ones here by smiling. And chimpanzees are the same. When they are happy, they don't do this. They drop that bottom lip. And maybe their bottom teeth show because their face is so relaxed. But then they make this breathy pant like this. <laughs> like that. And that is a chimpanzee laugh and a chimpanzee play face. So if you ever visit chimps again, whether that's at Project Chimps or at a zoo, I guarantee you if all the other humans are like, hey, chimps I'm so happy to see the chimps doing this and you go over and you go <laughs> that chimp is going to probably do a double take and go whoa this person knows chimpanzee and especially if kids do it a lot of times chimps are really interested in kids and if kids do that behavior I've had chimps come over and you know play on the glass if it's a glass viewing thing and they'll trace their hands and they'll laugh and play with the kids so that's a way to stand out if you have enough social courage to do that and uh, everybody else might look at you like you're crazy but when all the chimps come over then they will start singing a different tune so that's actually a fear grin when you're doing this that means you're scared and chimps are obviously smart enough like Let's, I still smile around chimps. I try to do chimp behavior as much as possible. When I'm playing with them, I'm doing the <laughs> like this, but still you can't help it. You smile sometimes, right? So I smile around. They don't all of a sudden think, oh God, she's afraid. They've learned that we're different. They recognize those differences, but man, they enjoy it when you do the chimp behaviors with them. Um, and these are just some other facial expressions they make. Usually this is young ones are begging for more milk from their mom or something like that if they're whimpering with this face. And this is a pant hoot. And a pant hoot is a long-term or a, a long call vocalization they use to communicate because these parties are distributed, right? So when they're not always together, how do they know where the other groups are at? So they can reform parties. So they'll make this pant hoot vocalization that sounds like ooh, 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 ooh. And then it ends in a scream a lot of times, but then other individuals can respond and they can communicate and they can come together and move apart as they need to. Okay, so that's enough Chimp 101. So back to the sanctuary very quickly, show you some pictures and some videos. This is our transport trailer. This was actually made by Dale. Dale, why am I blanking on his name right now? But Yes. 
Uh, yes, he makes trailers for all sorts of famous people and now Project Chimps, we're part of that group. Um, so this is a trailer we pick the chimpanzees up in. It will ha hold up to 11 individuals at a time. Each chimpanzee gets their own window seat. This is actually me looking into the trailer. And we stop every couple of hours um, and we to give to the chimps food, make sure they have enough water, make sure everybody's doing well. But we also have cameras in the trailer and a baby monitor so we can hear them, we can see them. So we know if somebody's screaming in distress, maybe someone is sick from motion sick. So the veterinarian is always with us and we can medicate them as we need to. 